And now, from 12 Studios, this is News 12 Now. Today is Thursday, May 9th. Welcome to News 12 Now. I'm Kylie Dudman. Well, we have an update on the stabbing in Sherman from this morning. The suspect has been identified and arrested. Police say 32-year-old Sharon Andolino stabbed a man several times before 5 this morning at the Cedar Hollow Rehabilitation Center. She was arrested for injury to elderly with intent, causing serious bodily injury. Police say the victim is in stable condition at a local hospital. Andolino, who fled the scene initially, was located and detained in Denison. Now stay with News 12 as we continue to follow this developing story. Well, turning to weather now, it's been a quiet morning so far, but things are starting to become more active for this afternoon. Brian, what can we be expecting? Yep, our next chance of thunderstorms is in the works right now. It's already starting to kind of develop in certain portions of, uh, well, Texas and Oklahoma. Not really quite here in Texoma yet, but the beginnings of it are kind of to the south of Wichita Falls. So it is marching north and eastward towards us here in Texoma. And we do actually have a severe thunderstorm watch now in place that uh, covers uh, the areas in pink. So we're going to kind of update you on that, at least right now. Uh, everything kind of holding together, but you can see those thunderstorms getting closer to uh, the Highway 81 and 287 corridors. So we'll keep you updated on that. Temperature wise, we're going to be in the 70s and 80s heading into this afternoon. So uh, some of these storms haven't even hit some of that instability yet. We'll definitely keep you updated on that. We kind of have a warm front, a, a loose draped warm front across the area. So uh, we'll definitely keep you updated. Weather alert in place this afternoon for areas south of the Red River because of that damaging hail threat. So yeah, we're going to bring you kind of uh, how long this will be lasting in Texoma and uh, when our next chance of thunderstorms will be returning here in just a little bit. Till then, back to you, Kylie. All right, thank you, Brian. With several public storm shelters closing in the past few years, more residents are opting to buy or build their own private shelter. The last public storm shelter in Durant closed back in 2021 because of safety concerns. Emergency management says there are now a little over 700 registered private shelters in Bryan County. All private storm shelters are tracked so that way they can be more informed in search and rescue situations after a destructive storm. Because there's been instances where people have been killed, they survived the storm, but because of flooding or something else, they died inside their shelters because they were trapped and couldn't get out. If you're looking at buying or building a private storm shelter, experts recommend to make sure it's certified by the National Storm Shelter Association and complies with their safety standards. And as we all look to get out and about with temperatures warming up this spring, so do snakes. In the Texoma region, there are three venomous snakes we should look out for. Water moccasins, also known as cottonmouths, copperheads, and timbrel rattlesnakes. Any type of snake bite is going to be a defensive reaction. Um, the best way to avoid a snake bite is to give it a little bit of space. If you give a snake five to ten foot of room, you'll never get bitten by a snake. But if you do get bit by a snake, be sure to take a picture to identify whether it's venomous or not. And if it is, you need to visit the hospital. But if the snake is not bothering you, be sure it has a way out as it will eventually just slither away. Well, overnight closures are coming to Sherman's busiest highway intersection. The frontage roads of U.S. 75 and 80 Till will be closed every evening through Friday from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. Now, it might be the northbound lanes one night and the eastbound lanes another, but don't be surprised if you run into a detour that wasn't there the day before. TxDOT says construction crews are finishing up work on an overpass. And the Roosevelt Bridge over Lake Texoma was shut down for about 12 hours yesterday after a semi jackknifed and crashed. The Oklahoma Highway Patrol says part of the semi, as you can see here, was hanging over the bridge. Apparently it, it uh, impacted some guardrail on the bridge, uh, may have done some other damage. The bridge was reopened about 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Luckily, no injuries were reported. Well, Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene tried unsuccessfully to oust House Speaker Mike Johnson yesterday. The effort was quickly shot down by both Republicans and Democrats. Fox News correspondent Connor Hansen has more from New York. 
I'm sick and tired of the Republican Party that never does what they say they're going to do. After repeated threats to try to oust House Speaker Mike Johnson, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene brought her motion to the House floor. Her speech was met with negative reactions. And the House quickly rejected her effort. I'm proud of what I did today. And, and I'm thankful that all of this has been exposed. Green has complained that Speaker Johnson passed aid for Ukraine without border funding attached, amongst other grievances. Hopefully this is the end of the personality politics and the frivolous character assassination that has defined the 118th Congress. It's regrettable. It's not who we are as Americans, and we're better than this. Other Republicans leaving the chamber were quick to roast the Georgia Congresswoman in front of the cameras. Moscow Marjorie has clearly gone off the deep end, uh, maybe the result of a space laser. But uh, this type of tantrum is absolutely unacceptable. There is no plan. Marjorie wants to, you know, uh, sow chaos and division within the Republican Party. Green has consistently been one of former President Trump's biggest supporters in Congress. But in a Truth Social post, Trump encourage Republicans to vote against her motion, saying he loves Green, but, quote, if we show disunity, which will be portrayed as chaos, it will negatively affect everything. Along with Representative Green, there were only 10 other Republicans who voted to try to keep her effort to oust Johnson alive. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Former President Donald Trump is back in a New York City courtroom today. He faces 34 counts of falsifying business records to cover hush money payments. Michael George has the latest from New York. Former President Trump arrived at court Thursday morning as testimony resumes in his hush money trial. Before entering, he revealed his lawyers just filed what he called a major motion in appellate court. Concerning the absolutely unconstitutional gag order, where I'm essentially not allowed to talk to you about anything meaningful that's going on in the case, and many good things are come, going on with the case. It shouldn't have been filed. Former adult film star Stormy Daniels is back on the stand. On Tuesday, she testified about an alleged sexual encounter with Trump in 2006, at times in graphic detail. Trump denies the encounter took place. While payments to Daniels are part of the prosecution's case, legal experts say the graphic testimony is not relevant and could prejudice the jury. The point is that she received that hush money payment, and the point is for her to talk about when and where and how she received that payment, but not the details of the alleged sexual encounter here. Trump's lawyers asked for a mistrial. Judge Juan Mershon denied the motion, but acknowledged some of this would have been better left unsaid. Daniel's testimony is a buildup to another key prosecution witness, Trump's former personal lawyer, Michael Cohen. He arranged the $130,000 payment to Daniels and later went to prison for orchestrating the payments and other charges. Hello, everybody. Trump, who is running for president, has repeatedly said this entire trial is politically motivated. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Thank you for watching today's News 12 Now. Make sure to subscribe so you find out why Texoma turns to us. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook, where you'll see more social media exclusive content. Want more News 12 Now? Watch us live every weekday through the KXII app on your phone or TV and through our website.